yo what is going on steeler nation welcome back to the steel factory podcast uh episode 405 i'm rion i'm joined by my co-host junior today what's up what's up um victory monday feels what feels good to get one in the bag right away um again just like a really dominant performance by our defense as we've seen usually in past week ones except last year um but yeah looking back that Bills uh, week one game shut them down. Then that Bengals one was honestly a master class um, in 2022. Um, but yeah, overall, how do you feel? Uh, I mean, I, I think, dude, our defense looked fantastic. Watt is looking as good as ever, maybe even better than that. Um, ob- like he, Obviously, like his stats are crazy, and they should have been even better. They kept... Uh, they kept throwing flags on on stuff, or they, you know, they had that no, or they had that flag that shouldn't have been a flag. Yeah, a couple of phantoms. Got a strip yeah, yeah, um, and no, he just looked amazing. And I, I don't know if uh, I remember I saw a few times like people mentioning how little Kirk Cousins was moving back there. I know we talked about how like Kirk is not a hundred percent. Yeah, he's definitely um, limited. Yeah, so he, he looked he de- he looked a little stiffer than usual, you know. Not that Kirk was ever like this super mobile quarterback, but he looked he looked really stiff. I, I saw a lot of people mention like this is the least they've seen any quarterback move <laughs> around back there in a long time. Yeah. So, uh, you know that 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 definitely played a factor in us being able to really generate a lot of pressure and you know generate those mistakes on his end. Like we looked, we looked fantastic as a defense. We looked super prepared. So I'm, I'm really excited that like, uh, we were able to shut down what should have been like uh, one of the higher end offenses in the league. No, yeah, they definitely have potential. But yeah, before we get into like basically a play by play that we like to do, um, on these like recap episodes, let's get into what happened last week. So we recorded what Monday, posted Tuesday, and then um, uh, fucking. Russ, I guess, re-aggravated the calf from uh, pushing the sled way back in July. Um, I, I, for all, for, you know, all we knew, or I thought we all were, like, past it at this point, right? No mm-hmm. idea, like, like, and it came back, um, which was, like, the second or third day of practice last week, like, on Wednesday. Um... So then there was that, that was the, that was kind of thrown up in the air, but it honestly kind of felt like 50, 50, if they would go to fields or Russ would just play through it. Um, so then there was that. And then we had the Cam Hayward extension, which by all means, if you know what you're talking about is a pretty good deal, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Like we just guaranteed his money this year. I think we upped his like, uh, we up, you know, I think we gave him a little bit of like a raise. Mm-hmm. But this year's guaranteed, and then the next two are just kind of there. Yeah. Uh, which is, I mean, perfect for us. Um, obviously, like, Cam is still Cam. He, he's, you know, he's not, he's not like a super crazy, like, athlete that was ever going to, like, fall off with age. He was, he's more of a... Just a like, really good, strong yeah, guy right there. <laughs> strong. Yeah, just strong. Like, James Harrison. Like, making plays. Fucking, yeah. Yeah, he could. He plays his part. He's been on the team since 2010, 2011. He's a captain, well integrated man of the year. Um, and it's good that he's going to be a one helmet guy, like they were saying uh, this week when they signed that deal. Stiller for life, pretty much. And then a couple of days later, uh, we extended Friar Move, which there was talks all offseason that we'd do it. I didn't think we'd actually do it. And I didn't think we'd do it for this long. Thoughts on what, like the four year 12 million annual average? I 12.4 or some shit. I, I like the price. I don't think Fryermuth is in that like upper echelon um, of tight ends. He, I he's think. I, a fringe top 10 if he gets his looks. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If you made him more of a focal point, like, like you know, like a Travis Kelsey. Kind of, I don't even know if Travis Kelfi is that much of a focal point anymore. I don't think he gets the targets that he used to get. But mm-hmm. if in that style of offense, where like he he's one of the more, uh, the bigger components of it, like I, I think he could deliver. Um, yeah. But but I think just for the talent level, I I think twelve million is really good. I, I think that's right about where he deserves to be. And I think what we're betting on is, 
is that by the end of this year that that contract looks like a great value. I think we're betting on him looking like a $15, $16 million tight end, uh, but when we're paying him for 12 which yeah, is Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, we'll get into like how he played because definitely – and I wanted him to get a little bit more involved. I'll pull up the stats right here. But honestly, um, the cap's always going up. That $12 million is going to look like nothing by the end of the deal. Same with Cam Hayward's deal. If he plays through it all and doesn't retire like next year or whatever, um, these deals aren't going to look that bad once you get to the second or third year of them. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, if they want to renegotiate and they've proven it, then, yeah, probably give them an extension even more. Even more. Um but overall, I think it's a good deal for Fryer Move. Yeah, he's capable of being not the guy, but a really good focal point in the offense. Um, but let's talk about the guy, though, from this game. Now that we'll, we'll get into it, George Pickens. It seemed like everything yeah, kind of yeah. flowed through him. A um, little more than I'd like to. Honestly, really kind of was hoping they'd spread the ball more. But hey, Justin Fields was finding him open, and he was getting open. I don't know if that's just the Falcons. Um, just doing single coverage the whole time. I know they have some pretty good safeties back there. Um, but overall, George Pickens, like what you see so far or not? Definitely, dude. He, he's turning into like our our dreams of basically like what we thought he could be. Yeah. You know? Like he's turning into a legit wide receiver one. Um, oh, not yeah. just like a, a very high end wide receiver too, but he, he's looking like he just like has that it factor. Like where he just he just has like such sticky hands, you know. First of all, like anything anything in his catch radius, like he comes down with it. If he's you know, and he's also just fantastic at the line or at the yeah. at the sideline. Like he's fantastic at working it. Um, you know, we definitely saw some catches in preseason where they weren't called catches, but you know, everyone everyone could have been you know you could have been convinced, right? Uh, so I, I think, dude, Pickens is turning into a real stud, and especially if we're feeding him the way we are, like he's gonna have a monster season. Um, I don't know, maybe touchdown wise, he might have like seven. <laughs> you want to get know, him at like, least to five, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want him to have Deontay numbers, right? Uh, right. But like. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see like what he can put up as far as yardage. Like, I, I don't even know like what to put on it right now yeah with 17 game season they're moving above me right now um sounds like they're moving furniture or some shit but anyways let's get into it um starting off falcons received the ball to start the game they went down pretty convincing drive honestly i was not nervous at that point but i was kind of like all right let's make our adjustments let's tighten up they had that for a whole first drive scripted they got down held them to a field goal that's fine um and then we kind of had like a decent drive right after that i think balls will hit his first 50 yarder at that point um that's what you think about it too it's like okay kick off you get the ball at the 30 50 yard field goal you're barely getting the ball to their 40 so barely like 30 yards of a fucking actual uh movement there um uh, balls will hit that first field goal which honestly um i think balls is the mvp besides tj in this game fucking i think yeah. i had like 28 fantasy points from him Six field goals, three from our, were above 50 yards, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, after that first drive, we kind of really started shutting it down on defense. I think the second drive, um, was that the first pick? Um, let me bring it, let me pull up the stats. I'm not sure. Let me put up the play by play, but yeah, uh, after we kicked that field goal, we gave it back to them. And then, oh yeah, that was the first pick by Kirk. Um, I think it was like on the first or second play of that drive. I want to say, actually, no, wait, I am reading it. Oh, wait, yeah, that was the first pick. I think that was by the the new uh, the new safety, yeah, Deshaun Elliott. Good early returns on him. Like to see that. Um, no, yeah, it looks good. Again, all this is TJ Watt, that front four, just getting pressure on a Kirk, which, you know, um, you said that he wasn't moving at all. I think I saw on Twitter that he was working from the pistol, like on 98% of the plays. And, you know, the commentators kept saying that too. Like, we don't really see the pistol like this that much. Never for Kirk. It's all because of fucking the Achilles or whatever. What was the Achilles, right? Yeah, dude, he's not. You can you can tell he's not 100%. Yeah, um, and then mid-30s too. So it's like, all right. Yeah, maybe taking a little longer to recover. No, but they, no, he like, I mean, credit to him though. 
they were saying that no one has really came back from an injury like that and played week one the next year. No, no at least, it, yeah, it it's rare. I remember uh, there was a uh, a running back for the Rams that got their Achilles uh, tore a couple years ago, and he like it took him two years to get to like decent, you know. So it's yeah. definitely like a it's a long process to get back to. Uh, I don't even know if you want to like a hundred percent, maybe like like eighty five, right? Obviously, right. for quarterbacks, it's not a huge um, deal, right? I think I think we're gonna see a a big difference with with Aaron Rodgers, considering he had, I think, another two months, yeah, of man. extra, maybe closer to ten weeks of extra time to heal up. So Aaron Rodgers might look a little bit more um, just in form compared to Kirk. But I mean credit to Kirk, dude. That's a that's a fucking terrifying injury. It's it's I think it's it's worse than your ACL. ACLs have gotten pretty we've gotten pretty good at healing up ACL tears. Like right. I, th- I think the timetable is basically six or seven months now. Yeah. Um but Achilles are such a new thing, um, just in general to like sports science. So no, yeah. I mean we'll see. Hopefully yeah. hopefully it continues just kinda improving. We'll see what the Falcons no, because this was a playoff team or could have a shot. Uh, anyways, that interception led to a field goal again, six to three, couple punts. And then um, this drive was kind of, it was stupid. The uh, So the Falcons kind of marched down and then I think they got to the red zone. And this was the first TJ strip sack that should have been um, from my eyes. I thought he timed it perfectly on the snap, right? Yeah, dude, I, I've been looking at like, like frame by frame videos. No, that's all I did. Like, so I did the whole halftime. I was just like going back and forth. Yeah, frame by frame. It was like it, it looks like he got it perfect. I, and I think he mentioned in a post game interview or something that he talked to the ref and the ref was like, "Yeah, we messed up." Wait, actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm pr- I'm pretty sure that, that's fucked. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty I'm certain I saw that tweet where he was like. Like yeah, I spoke to the the head referee or or the sideline judge, or whoever, right? And he's yeah. like, yeah, we messed up that. The call. line judge, that's pretty yeah. that because that led to their own. I mean, the only touchdown of the game, which stupid. So at that point, I'm like, all right, that's a seven point swing. We could have probably had the ball. Sirens going off. That's crazy. Uh, anyways, that led to the only touchdown of the game. Literally the play after. It kind of pisses you off. You're thinking TJ played or made like a really sick play. Got the strip sack. We recovered too. Um, but yeah, touchdown to Michael Pitts. And I'm like, Kyle Pitts, wide open. Uh, we get the ball back. And this was really like the first time you saw Fields really air it out on this um, on this drive to kind of, with like less than like 30 seconds to get that field goal, right? Um, yeah. And it's good. Like, these are situations where you got to throw the ball to your best player, and George Pickens fucking delivered. No, yeah, this is perfect. This is like the – we're already seeing, like, the kind of plays that uh, uh, that Fields used to make with uh, DJ Moore. I think yeah. I think DJ Moore and, and Pickens have a little bit of, like, a similar player profile as far as, like, stylistically goes. Uh, but, yeah, just, like, the go routes that Pickens runs and his, like, sticky hands and the catch radius – and oh, the yeah. sideline work, like I, I think that's gonna pair up super well with like Fields' deep ball, which is, uh, I mean, I know we we've talked a lot of shit about Fields here, like <laughs> just trying to, like get to the bottom of this, but like Fields Fields has a deep ball, um, right, right, you know, like he'll, I mean, he'll stare him down on the way over there, but he has the deep ball. It's, uh, it's a we, great ball. We saw it that play design kind of shifted the line to the left, right on the play action or whatever. Um, and then George ran a really good route, acted like he was in a fade to the left. Uh, anyways, turns out to the outside. Fields basically has to throw across the field, downfield. That's even harder of a throw. Showed the arm strength there. He can make that throw. Um, but yeah, you just kind of have to improve on all the other stuff, like reads and not staring down your receivers, like you said. And then that took us to halftime. I think that was, was that another 50 yarder by Boz? Yeah. I think it was like 56 um, or something. Yeah, there was like a 57, a 56, and a 51. Um, oh but yeah, gosh. best kicker in the league, Chris Boswell. Um, I'm not no, kidding, s- <laughs> he's gonna be our leading scorer. No, like it's true though. Like, I wonder how far he is from becoming like our all-time leading scorer because you know those field goals and extra points—they all count, dude. It's been like 
six seven years right i think we got him 20... no, 2015 we got him 2015 it's yeah, been here it, nine years already? this is this is year 10 for him now oh my year God. of us yeah um yeah you're right he's probably real close no yeah um we got we signed him to an extension like not even a year or two ago too i think um but yeah that took us to halftime you feel all right nine to ten right and then honestly like this is when the defense just completely pitched a shutout um we got the ball to start didn't really do anything and then i think well ball don't lie first of all um literally like first or second play of that drive or whatever oh no they got down to they got down to our territory and then it was complete like mishandle of the offense I think Kirk was trying to uh, get a guy to motion, and then the center snapped the ball right into him, and then guess who lands uh, on the ball right away? T.J. Watt. Um, yeah, you know, that's just, uh, football justice pains. right there. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I mean, T.J. had that coming. Again, drove down, another field goal. Um, and then, yeah, defense just kind of get going to it. Field goal, punt, field goal, punt. And then there was the one play where you kind of started to feel like Justin was really kind of coming into the deep to the offense um, with a good balance of like, you know, um, intermediate throws, good uh, handoffs to Najee. And then we drove down first appearance in the red zone. What did you think about going for it to on that fourth and one or whatever that could have made it an 18, 10 game at that point with like six, seven minutes left? I, that that was really disappointing. I, I you know like I, I don't really care for about the going for it. I know people were saying like oh we've been conservative all game. Like this is you should just be go up eight right now and yeah and yeah. Uh, and and uh, make them have to score a touchdown and the extra and the two point conversion. Right. Uh, but like I, I get that perspective, but I also see like bro if you if you get it like you you win. You know like it, it's it's the same sort of thing. Like and I think. You know, the decision is whatever. The decision is 50-50. And I think I'm not convinced, like, oh, if you're conservative before, you need to continue being conservative throughout the game. Right. Um, you know, I, I, you definitely have to pick your spots to, you know, to make the bigger plays and to make the bigger and to take the bigger risks. Yeah. The bigger problem was just, like, all the execution around the QB sneak was terrible. Right. No, yeah. Uh, if they were like... mentioning on the on the broadcast, like, oh, these guys are not organized. Like, they don't know what play they're running. And then as soon as... And then as soon as they get it lined up real quick, uh, they take forever to line up, and the defense figures it out. Like, oh, it's a QB. Yeah, like, like, we don't look like we're crowding the line. They're definitely crowding the line. And then, yeah, like you said, the whole game, it'd be like a third and 11 or whatever, and we're at the 40. We're not airing it out. We're just running it and just conceding to the fucking field goal on third down. You know what I mean? Like, all right. Yeah. We'll just kick the field goal here. You don't need to throw it. That was literally what happened the whole first half and the whole third quarter. And I get it. You kind of felt good on that drive. You know, Fields marched it down. We basically burned like half of the fourth quarter on that drive. Um, but yeah, I mean, at that point, I think you do want to just kick the field goal, go up 18-10. Um, anyways, defense holds it down. Another three and out at that point. Um, and then now you're thinking again, all right, can we have another one of those drives and a seal the deal here? And then that was our only three and out uh, of the game. And we ended up fucking moving backwards. I guess there was, I think it was like a penalty or a bad sack. Um, I think that was the Judon sack. And then that's when he really kind of felt the game kind of do a whole 180 because we're punting it back to them. We're only up five. So a touchdown basically um, gives them the lead. And then you got to hope that we're getting the ball back for a good amount of time. Um, and then bang, two plays later, interception. Second pick of the day, third turnover for the Falcons. Um, like the defense just stood up every single time. And Our defense it, looks yeah, elite. Yeah. Yeah. It looks elite. Like last season, uh, we were top five in like all the advanced metrics or whatever. And that was with uh I think Watt didn't play all season, Minka didn't play all season. We no, had a terrible Watt, fucking Minka Minka missed like eight games. Watt did play most of la all of last year except the uh the Ravens game where he kind of went down in the second half and then he missed the playoff oh, game. Oh yeah, it was no Cam missed a lot of time too. Cam um, missed a lot of time. Yeah. Well, look right right now we're healthy and our defense is looking elite, dude. Our our linebacking core, uh, weren't an obvious problem. So that means it's not like last year where it was just very obvious. Like, 
Yeah, like, once every you got to that game. back half, we started so many linebackers, and you're just like, dude, like they could just run the ball over us. Kind of patched that up this time. Um, shout out to, um, I don't want to fuck this up, Peyton Wilson. Uh, Peyton number Wilson. 41 looked good. Patrick Queen looked good. Um, oh, yeah, a guy that got the pick there. Early returns on the Deontay Johnson trade. De- Dante Jackson sealed the deal. He had half as many catches as Deontay yesterday. Hey, uh, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, whatever happened to Joy Porter Jr.? Did he come back in? He came I, back I in. He... Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So but yeah, just got Drake, up. Drake London, non-factor the whole game, right? Yeah, dude. Drake London was supposed to finally have his like quarterback and be a legit wide receiver one. And like, dude, Bajan, he got like all the touches in the world. That was and he's good. And really, didn't... he's good though. He... Bajan's great. Yeah, but yeah. like, I'm just saying, like, like he got all the touches in the world, and and we contained them. You know, these are. Uh, Kyle Pitts got a touchdown, but aside from that, kind of a non-factor. Like these are all premier talents. In, no, these uh, are McVay. top top ten guys in the draft the last yeah. three years. These are blue chip guys, dude. These are blue chip talents all over their offense in a McVay, you know, Shanahan style offense. We wanted that right? OC. Not... Wasn't that Zach Robinson or whoever it was? Yeah, we did. We wanted him bad. Yeah, uh, and they couldn't do anything. Like we we did a fantastic job. So it's it's exciting stuff to see like our our defense being elite against you know what should be a top ten offense right just right. in theory uh you know you could say whatever you want about Kirk being hurt and stuff like their line uh, is decent see. too I think uh well the one that one like left or right guard came out with a concussion check or whatever he was like an all pro apparently like they have dudes on their line too um yeah it was just a matter of I mean they mentioned it too the reason why. Artie Smith went seven and ten every year because they didn't have a fucking quarterback. And they did. You know, Kirk's still on the come up. We got him at a good time. Uh, I'm not gonna argue with that. But yeah, that's good to see. Um and then we kicked that field goal with TJ Watt, sacked to end the game. Good to see him get his finally. Um but yeah, overall, great game by the defense. Um and then someone said on Twitter, like, okay, now look at next week. I mean, we're looking at the Broncos, but just to kind of, I think at this point early on in the season, you kind of want to look at the people you've played and how they've played on other weeks to kind of get a good idea on how good the teams you've played so far are. Um, but I think that Atlanta defense might be a little bit better than we gave them credit for at the start of the last week. I, I think so. I, I think, um, you know, obviously Raheem Morris, their head coach, right? He was a, uh, he was a defensive coordinator of the Rams last year. Um, and apparently super well regarded, like mm-hmm. around the entire league. I remember Mike Tomlin said he's like one of the best guys he's ever met. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the best football minds, not just like people. Right. Um, so I, I think obviously super well coached up defense. Um, and I, I, I've, I've been saying like, yeah, the, the Falcons supposedly have one of the best safety tandems in the league. Obviously, it's looking like we also have one of the best safety tandems in the league. Uh, they have a shutdown corner. That might be why, you know, we only saw Pickens really get the ball on go routes. And it might be why we didn't have any faith in fields to do anything on third and 11. Um, yeah. So I, I think I think we didn't give the Falcons defense enough credit. And uh, I'm excited to to see what this offense can do. Uh, you know, if if it's Fields or or Russ, we'll we'll speculate more yeah, on that we'll, on Thursday. We'll talk about yeah on Thursday. We'll put out our second episode of the week. But uh, yeah, another thing that I kind of left out, and it was like around the time I was like, oh, this game feels like it just hit a whole 180 on us. Was when the punter went out, and you're kind of like, all right, oh, Boswell's yeah. fucking punting right now. Um, Bro, and then we had to, to have sucked. a backup holder. And dude, and then I'm thinking the worst, dude, because it's football. And I'm like, dude, this holder could botch this snap. They could run it back for a touchdown. That's how they. That's how we're probably gonna lose this fucking game right now. But no, I, I held my breath the whole time. Special teams executed it perfectly. But yeah, again, um, before we wrap this up, MVPs of the game, Boswell, not just because of the field goals, but for that punt, beautiful punt. Um, Pickens, of course. I mean, the stats were good. I mean, we wanted to, I wanted to get into this a little bit more about the stats because he had, like, what, eight receptions, I think? I um, think so. Let me pull it up. He had uh, six, actually. Six for 85 yards. And then, yeah, Friar move only four for uh, 27 yards. Four targets as well. So it's like, damn. Um, hopefully, I mean, maybe if Russ gets in there, 
you kind of see a good uh good mix more passing fields only did have 23 attempts too um and i felt like we did possess the ball a good amount that's just you know off field though oh but yeah mvps boswell watt pickens um yeah, i think you'd agree right yeah yeah i feel i feel good about those all right um but yeah man uh any other closing thoughts before we wrap this up closing thoughts um I get, no, our, our defense looks great. Our offense is the run game looked good. I, I, Najee, Najee, I think it was interesting seeing Najee like uh, get yeah. like the carries. Oh wait, hold up, wait a minute. Najee got all the carries, dude. I know underrated stat. When I looked up the carries, <laughs> Fields ended up having fourteen. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. That's I guess lot. fifty-seven yards is not bad on fourteen. Um, one thing that I did did not really like too the cold Cordell Patterson, especially on those like third down runs, like where we were just doing a draw just to kind of concede for the field goal. Didn't really like that. I mean, he had four carries for 13 yards. That's whatever. Um, I guess he would kind of like to see Warren get that. Um, and I guess we're kind of easing him back in from that hamstring. He had two carries for seven yards. That's what I'm thinking. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking Warren's not a hundred percent, and we yeah. don't need a. I mean, I mean. You want to look at this glass half full just to end this episode? We're out like our two best linemen, Samalu and then I guess Fontanu, right? Warren's still coming back from injury. And then, um, I don't know, I guess if you want to put Russ that much ahead of Fields, there's that too. So that's going to do it for us today, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Steelers are 1-0. Um, and that's that's you got to be happy about. Um, but yeah, last words. Last words. Feeling good. <laughs> Feeling good. Feeling all right. And yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Rating on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And yeah, peace out.